Brendan's lame, quiet on set. Oh, we're terrible. Is this supposed to be on? So I'm not quite started yet, Brendan sucks. Okay, quiet on set. Last time, we showed you how to quadruple your network speed for $100 and you complained. Now, some of your complaints were misinformed, inapplicable, or otherwise completely ridiculous. The technology I demoed, as I mentioned in the video, only works on Windows 8 and up. I mean, come on! And who the devil invited this guy to my comments section? But some of the complaints were very fair and even went as far as to ask why it is that we're talking about an admittedly flaky and proprietary solution when there's a more broadly applicable one also available on the cheap. So this video then is about how to 10x your network speed, and yes, thank you Iron Cut, that is internal network speed, not internet speed, between two systems on a budget. The Master Case 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. First order of business, there is no magic peanut butter that you can smear in your network port to turn it from a 1 gigabit to a 10 gigabit port. So we will need new, faster network cards for our two systems. And while I could say, all right then, let's head over to Amazon and grab a couple of Intel X540 10 gig cards with RJ45 jacks and then pick up a Netgear 10 gig switch, which would work great and scale well for the future, by the way, that would cost 1,500 US dollars, which is like, a million Canadian rubles. So no, no, we won't be doing that. Instead, as with most of my budget guides, we will begin by shopping on eBay. So let's find those network cards. We can save a lot of money by buying retired server cards. These uh, Emulex dealies have served us very well. Get it? Served us? Ah! That's a joke, but all the cheap ones out there have SFP Plus connectors instead of the standard RJ45 connectors that consumers are used to. So what do you do? Easy. You'll need a direct attach copper cable. I've had good experiences with the passive ones from CablesOnDemand.com and I've bought from them a couple of times. They cost anywhere from $40 to $140 and go up to 10 meters. So get a cable that is long enough to go between the two systems that you want to talk to each other more quickly. So probably your personal desktop and your network storage machine. Next we'll need, uh, actually that's about it. We're going to skip the network switch requirement by attaching our computers to each other directly. So let's get to it. Step one is to leave your onboard network card plugged in to the rest of your networked devices and your internet connection. Pop those NICs you bought into the two machines, run your cable between them, and boom! Windows will automatically detect the faster link whenever those two machines talk to each other, which... <laughs> Oh, I'm just kidding. Network crap is never that easy. Step two, with it still plugged in, that part of the first step was real, configure the IP addresses of your 10 gig cards manually. You can follow the guide that we have on the screen. And if you're not sure what to enter here, check your existing connection via IP config, then leave the first and second values the same and add some amount. So we're gonna put 50 in here to the third value. This will be the same for both of your machines. Then you need to pick a unique number from one to 254 for the fourth. These need to be different between the two machines you're connecting. 255.255.255.0 is good for the subnet mask and everything else is left auto or blank. Step three, for testing, disable other network interfaces and disable Windows Firewall. Don't forget to turn those back on when you're done or you'll have no internet or unprotected internet. Step four, ping. So we can see if these two machines can see each other properly by pinging the network addresses that we manually entered for the other machine. Then we can see if they'll pick up each other's host names with a slightly different command like so. Step five is to set up RAM disks using SoftPerfect RAM Disk, a free tool on each machine. A small RAM disk is fine. This is just to do a real world test of how quickly we can transfer files. 
Step six is to create test shares on both sides on the RAM disks with read and write permissions in both the sharing and security tabs on both machines. And then you can change these to the permissions that you want later on, although they're on RAM disks, so they're going to disappear anyhow. Step seven is to test the transfer using a large file and you'll either be saying, holy schmow, or WTF. If it worked, great. If you're in the WTF camp, then, uh, or it stops working later, move on to step number eight. While in theory, Microsoft should prioritize the faster link between the two computers, in practice, we found that even manually changing the priorities of our interfaces wouldn't stick. So we needed to alter the hosts file in order to statically assign that host name of the PCs to their IP addresses that are on the 10 gig network cards to prevent these computers from talking over the one gigabit network that they are also connected to for access to the internet and to your other devices. So do it like so, substituting in whatever IP addresses you're using for the ones that we've entered. And at that point, step nine, it's a Christmas miracle, unless step 10, your wife or brother or sister or whatever is like, how come Jeffrey gets faster network speeds and I don't? Well, if you had the foresight to buy a dual interface, that is two port card for the file server, then you can actually do the same thing again by just buying another cable and another NIC or network interface card. So all you've got to do then is change the third value in the manual IP address that you're setting again so the server machine will actually have three separate interfaces on three separate subnets. Alter the host files like so, and step 13, test access between these computers. So you should see one gigabyte per second between the two clients and the file server, and about 100 megabytes per second between the two clients to each other. Unless you want to take it one step further with another cable and another subnet if they all have dual interface cards. But I mean, at that point, you might want to start thinking about a network switch because you're basically back to token ring. Speaking of which, TunnelBear is the easy to use VPN app for mobile and desktop. TunnelBear lets you tunnel to up to 16 different countries, allowing you to browse the internet and use online services as if you are in that different country. They have apps for iOS, Android, the PC, and Mac, and they also have a Chrome extension. The apps are super easy to use. Even if you're not a networking person, you don't have to do any of that port forwarding nonsense or anything. You just turn the little dial. It actually looks like a little, little dial. You pick the country that you want to browse the internet as though you're in, and then two things happen. Your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption, and boom, your public IP address gets switched, so you show up as if you are somewhere else. And if you do have any trouble, even though they've made, tried to make it as simple as they possibly can, their friendly support bears will be there to help you. They'll even give you 500 megabytes of data for free to try it out with no credit card required. All you got to do is go to tunnelbear.com slash LTT. And then if you want to upgrade to unlimited, you can actually save 10% at our link as well. So check it out at the link in the video description. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, instructions for which are up here, buying a cool shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum, which gets you a little contributor badge. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So check out the video up there, which I'm filming this so far in advance, I have no idea what it'll be, but I guarantee you it's awesome.